35 verse 4. 35 verse 4. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 35 verse 4. Come on. Thou shalt not appear empty before the Lord. You must not appear empty before the Lord your God. You understand? Give me to Deuteronomy 16, 16. Because there was a word that the Lord said was, listen, when you come to Jerusalem three times a year, you men do not come to Jerusalem empty-handed. You understand? So likewise, in this truth now, in the land of our captivity, the way we offer up those sacrifices, we have to what? We have to bring fruits meet for repentance. That's why you must not appear before the Lord empty. Deuteronomy 16, 16. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verse 16. Uh-huh. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. That's Jerusalem, read. In the feast of unleavened bread, uh-huh. and in the feast of weeks, and in the feast of tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. You see that thing? You shall not appear before the Most High God empty handed. The most I don't like that. He said, listen, I gave you this book, the greatest knowledge on earth. Guess what you're doing? You coming empty handed. You're not having fringes on. You shave your beard, your cheeks not on your head, but you say you're an Israelite. No. You are not bringing food to meet for repentance. That's what I say. Come on, verse 17. Verse 17. Mm-hmm. Every man shall give as he is able, according to to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he had given thee. Come on. Judges and officers. Okay, read verse 17 again, I'm sorry. Verse 17 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verse 17. Read. Every man shall give as he is able. You must give as you are able, meaning what? In this truth, the Most High is not going to give us the same level of understanding. He's not going to give the, give us the same spirit in terms of what? And what the prophecies that are in this book. But whatever the most high God has allotted you, you go all out on them. You come ten times hard. Because if you are faithful with that small, guess what the Lord will do? You will see your faith and he will increase you. No doubt about it. The most high is not a, he's not a man that you should love. Verse 17 again. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 17. Come on. Every man shall give as he is able, mm-hmm. according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he had given thee. So you must give according to as you are able, based upon the blessing of the Lord that the Lord has given you. You understand? The Lord has given you the speech, you know how to read well. Listen, that's a blessing. You know how to teach, you know how to unlock mysteries and all of that. That's a, that's a blessing. You know how to organize things, you know how to organize the people and all of that. That's a blessing, that's a gift. You understand? So you must relish in that thing. Watch this. Go back to Sarah 34, 35 verse 4. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 35 verse 4. Come on. Thou shalt not appear empty before the Lord. Really? For all these things are to be done because of the commandment. Because of the what? Because of the commandment. So these things are, be, are to be done because of the commandment. You appear before the Lord empty, you are breaking the commandments. You understand? The most of God has given us the greatest knowledge on earth. Guess what we are doing with it? We are playing with it. So when the Lord comes and says, okay, where is your talents now? Where are those talents that I've given you? Guess what's going to happen? You're going to appear before the Lord empty. Guess what's going to happen? Luke 1927, here's what's going to happen. Because the most high God does not like a lazy servant. He don't like that. Remember, the most high is, listen, if you want to know about the original OG, that's the most high. He's the original gangster. He kills. He puts men and women to death. You understand? He's not that way Jesus with blue eyes. He's a big black man with a big apple and chains around his neck. Wearing a beautiful white garment. You see that thing? So we need to understand what we're dealing with here. Read on. Luke 19. Uh, no, no. Uh, Luke 19, 27. Sorry, I forgot my point. Oh, please. Luke 19, 27. The book of Luke, chapter 19, verse 27. Come on. But those my enemies. Those my what? 
those my enemies, but those my enemies, those that do not want to keep God's commandments, eh? which would not that I should reign over them. They don't want the Lord to rule over them because how does the Lord rule over us? He rule over us by commanding us to keep His laws. Really? Bring hither and slay them before me. You see what the Lord says you must do? Put that Negro to death. Put that brother to death. You understand? That's, that's the most, that's, this is, this is, our Lord has said, this is Christ. You see that thing? So we need to understand the power we are dealing with. Go back to Surah 35 and verse 5. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 35, verse 5. Uh -huh. For all these things are to be done because of the commandment. Me? The offering of the righteous maketh the altar fat, mm. and the sweet savour thereof is before the Most High. He says, the offering of the righteous maketh the altar fat. The offering of the righteous. So if you keep God's commandments, the Most High says, I'm going to accept your offering. Because the Lord is only interested in those, the righteous. Those that are fighting to keep his laws says, I'm only going to hear that brother. I'm only going to hear that sister. But that Negro right there, put him to death there. Yeah. I don't want to hear nothing from that brother right there. Why? Because he doesn't want to make an effort to fight to keep my laws. Listen, you have to have a goal in this truth. The, our forefather Abraham, he's back, by the way. The prophets are back. So guess what? Our forefather Abraham says he was a friend of God because he kept the laws. So you need to, you, who did you want the Lord to actually have a conversation? When he talks about you, he has a big smile on his face. Who wouldn't want that? Those are smokers, you might take that thing for granted. They say, oh no, but listen, that thing goes a long way. It keeps you in check. You say, you know, I want the Lord to have a conversation about me. The Lord doesn't have to think about any of us. He's too busy dealing with the issues of the universe. <laughs> you understand? But because you make an effort to get his attention, guess what? At that point, he stops what he's doing and looks at that brother and says, Yeah, you can like that brother every day. You see that? That's why David says he was a man after the most high God's heart. The, David loved the most high, he loved him. He wasn't because, no, he was obligated to keep the laws. No, he did because he had the love for it. And the most high God said, that's, that, that man right there, he's the one now. That's going to ruin in Israel. So the most high must have a big smile on his face when your name comes up. So those are things that we need to ponder on. You understand? Verse 6 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 35, verse 6. Come on. The offering of the righteous maketh the altar fat, uh -huh. and the sweet savour thereof is before the Most High. Remember now, back then, the animal had to be sacrificed on our behalf, right? Today, give me that in uh, Romans 12, is it? Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. That's the one right there. Romans 12 and 1. The book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. Mm -hmm. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, uh -huh. holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So we must present our bodies a living sacrifice. Guess what happens? Back then, under the old covenant, in order for your sins to be forgiven, an animal had to be sacrificed, right? Today, we are that sacrifice to offer up those spiritual sacrifices. Because that animal that was put to death, the, the, the oxen, the ram, the sheep, the goat, it will be dealt with on the altar of burnt incense, and the Lord will get the sweet smelling savor of it. Guess what? When you keep God's commandments, you become that sweet smelling savor unto the Father. You don't become that stench when the Lord says, when he thinks about you, he just cringes. We don't want that. We want the most high God to have a big smile on his face when he thinks about us here down the road and keeping his commandments, fighting the big fight, the good fight. You understand? Uh, give me Ephesians chapter 5, verse, verse 2. Ephesians 5 and 2. The 
the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2 mm -hmm. and walk in love Come on. as Christ also hath loved us mm -hmm. and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. You see that thing? That's what Christ did. When he was crucified, when he was nailed on the cross, when he was crucified, he became a sweet smelling savor unto the most high God, the majesty on high. So if we say we follow after the footsteps of Christ, guess what? We're going to go through the same thing that he went through. Because the servant is not more greater than the master. So the same thing that he went through, we have to go through it as well. The troubles that he faced, we must go through the same troubles. You understand? We can't escape it. We cannot escape it. Impossible. You understand? Go back to Sirach chapter 35. He's asking us 35 and 7. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 35, verse 7. Come on. The sacrifice of a just man is acceptable, and the memorial thereof shall never be forgotten. Shall never be forgotten by the Father. The Father will never forget that thing. That's why it says, the sacrifice of a just man, what does it mean to be just? Give me that in Ezekiel 18, verse 5. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 5. This is what it means to be just. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 5. Mm -hmm. But if a man be just. Is a man be what? But if a man be just. Is a man be just, come on. And do that which is lawful and right. So if you are just, you're going to do that which is according to the law. Because that which is according to the law is right in the sight of God. You understand? Let's go back. Sarah 25, verse 7 again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 35, verse 7. Come on. The sacrifice of a just man is acceptable, and the memorial thereof shall never be forgotten. So, the sacrifice of a just man, a lawful brother, a lawful sister that keep God's commandments, it says that that memorial will never be forgotten. The Lord says, I'm never going to forget you. I will always keep you in my, in my memory all the time. Because every single time when you keep my laws, I get that sweet smelling savor that comes up. That is what we need to understand. So if you have that in mind, say, listen, this thing that I'm about to do, will this glorify the Father or am I glorify my, my Father, the devil? You have to ask yourself that question. Because if you can ask yourself that question, it's not, it does, it's not going to come automatic, by the way. It's something that you have to rehearse. You have to practice, apply all the time. Whatever decision you make, weigh it. Will this be a sweet smelling saver or will this be a sticking saver? That's the question you must have. Because whatever decision you make dictates who you serve. If you buy on the Sabbath, you're not serving the God of the Bible. You're serving Satan. But if you don't buy on the Sabbath, you're serving the most high God. And guess what? There's a sweet smelling sin. Because you're offering spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable. You understand? Guess what? Because the most high God, he gets angry. And the condition of our people is an example of the Lord being angry with us. Let me give an example, right? What the Lord did in the past. Jeremiah 7. Jeremiah 7 verse 15. Because it got to a point where the most high was so pissed off with us. He even prevented the prophets from praying for, pray for the people. He said, don't pray for them. Jeremiah 7 verse 15. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 7, verse 15. Come on. And I will cast you out of my sight, mm. as I have cast out all, all, all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Because at this point, Judah was going into captivity under Nebuchadnezzar. Bible. Read. Therefore, pray not thou for this people. You see what the Lord is telling Jeremiah? Is that don't pray for them. Because I want, to, I want to judge them. Do not pray for them. Read. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up, cry nor pray for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. You see what? Listen. The most of God won't pray again. He said, listen, if you pray for these people, I'm not going to hear nothing you say. I'm going to ignore you. I'm not going to see you. 
Because I sent you out there to teach them they didn't hearken. Now is my time to bring forth judgment now. If you pray, I'm not going to hear you because it's my time now. So guess what? The same thing that happened back then is going on today. Our people, the pastors of the street, like we're crazy. They give us the finger, they speak, they speak at us. They say all kinds of evil things against us. The Lord is saying in the spirit, they say, don't pray for them here. Yeah. And if you do pray, I'm not going to hear nothing you say. That's gangster. That's courage. That's gangster right there. Read again the 16. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 7, verse 16. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry, nor pray for them. Come on. Neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Because the job of, a pro of, a, of the prophets is to, inter is, is to make intercession. You are a messenger. You understand? The Lord says, no, no, no. Today your job, you're going to be quiet. You're going to say nothing. Read. Seest thou not? What they do in the cities of Judah. He says, Don't you see what they do? They are buying, they are selling, they are cooking on the Sabbath day, they are bumping and grinding, no marriage. Listen, you see what they are doing? They have heard the word. It's my time now. This is boom. You understand? All manner of issues go on. Abortions now. I'm gonna make sure that I kill the father, then I'm gonna leave the children fatherless. That's how the Lord deals it. Even through all the, the book, that's what the Mosai does it. He does it. But sometimes we don't think about it like that because we think, oh no, but because believe it or not, sometimes, right, especially if you are still coming into this, you are still new, that sees a body I can pass through you here. That sees a body spirit, very dangerous, that thing. That white Jesus spirit, very dangerous. Yeah. Because this is what they asked ask the sister. So, because I was showing her flyers and this is a crisis back here in Israel, like you need to repair, keep the laws of God. He said, no, but it doesn't matter what color he is. I said, okay. When you pray, the Jesus that you see in your mind, what color does he look like? You know, before she, she wanted to answer, and it just hit him. Wait a minute. Actually, you need to think about that. Which Jesus do I see in my when I pray? And she couldn't answer me. Because she just realized that. I said, but, sister, the Jesus that you pray to, does he look like this? Or does he, does he have a different color than the one I'm showing? She kept going back to, no, but color doesn't matter because she didn't want to answer the question. Because she knew that had Jesus, um, because there's no way that she's prayed to a transparent one. No, no, no possible. The Jesus she's prayed to has color, pigmentation. So she's, he's not transparent. You see that? So when, those, when people want to know that color doesn't matter, just ask them a simple question. You will hear crickets, but it will, it will what? It will actually spark something in their mind. You know, but that question right there, really, what does he look like? You know exactly what he looks like. He's white. He's got blue eyes and he looks gay because he is gay. Yeah. You understand? Let's go back. Let's go back to where he was at now. Uh, where was we at? Seraphim 5, verse 7. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 35, verse 7. Come on. The sacrifice of a just man is acceptable, uh -huh. and the memorial thereof shall never be forgotten. Now give me Hebrews 12, 23. It says, the sacrifice of a just man is acceptable, and the memorial thereof shall never be forgotten. Hebrews 12, verse 23. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 23. The book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 23. Come on. To the general assembly and church of the firstborn. The general assembly is, we are the general assembly, the children of Israel. The church of the firstborn is the children of Israel, which are what? Which are written in heaven, Come on. and to God the judge of all, uh -huh. and to the spirits of just men made perfect. The spirits of just men made perfect. So when a just man, um, Offer a sacrifice. Guess what happens? That man will become perfect in the sight of God. Yeah? Because there's a thing in the way they say, no, nobody's perfect. Okay? Give me Matthew 5 8. Let's see what the commandment says. Because the worldly sayings, right, they are very dangerous also. It's evil communication. 
Because they say, because when somebody says, but nobody's perfect, you know what they are doing? They are leaving that hot pocket to go back into their sin. You are leaving that hot hole to go back into sin because you say, oh, no, but I'm not perfect. You understand? To justify you breaking the laws of God, say, no, but I'm not perfect, I'm still struggling with this. You understand? Matthew 5, 48. Here's what Christ commanded us. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 48. Come on. Be ye therefore perfect. Be ye what? Be ye therefore perfect. He says, be ye therefore perfect. This is a commandment. Come on. Even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. You see that thing right there? This is a law. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So you need to tell me that uh, that was just a misprint, you know. Christ spoke out of 10, he was just drunk on that day. No. It's a rule for us to be perfect. That's what we read in the book of Job when it says, a perfect and an upright man. Because in church they say, nobody was perfect except for, except for Jesus. No, but we read about Job, he was perfect and he was upright. You see that? Let's see what it means to be perfect. Give me that in 1 Kings 8.61. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 61. Here's what it means to be perfect. The book of 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 61. Come on. Let your hearts therefore be perfect with the Lord our God. You see that thing? Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God. Come on. To walk in his statutes uh -huh. and to keep his commandments as at this day. You see that? To be perfect means to keep the commandments of God. So if we want that level of perfection, guess what we must do? Keep the laws of God. So but does it mean that you're not going to have evil thoughts crossing your mind? No, you don't mean that. You will. But guess what? The more you keep practicing, guess what's going to happen? Slowly, those evil thoughts, they start to leave your mind. Because you are, you are applying yourself. Because when you apply, spiritually something happens and physically something happens to your brain. Your brain rewires. Your brain chemistry changes when you apply the laws of God. The more you apply, the more you fight sin, the more you fight lust, guess what happens to your brain chemistry? It changes too. Because your brain is a spirit, your mind is a spirit. It changes also. Guess what? The people that are addicted to drugs and all of that, their brain chemistry is different. You understand? They, they are vulnerable when it comes to um, any type of drug. They are vulnerable. Because their mind is now dependent on that thing. When that thing is taken away, guess what happens to the brain? The brain goes into distress. The brain starts to attack itself. Guess what happens? Some people have brain aneurysm, they drop dead. Because the brain is not getting what it wants, so it, what? it retaliates. So when you deal with the word of God, that's the ultimate solution. That's how you cleanse your temple. You understand? Give me that in 1 Peter 1 and 10. 1 Peter 1 and 10. Because this is what the Apostle Peter said to us. This is how you make sure that um, your temple remains clean and you maintain cleansing your temple. It requires maintenance. Um, give me now 2 Peter 1. Let me see, let me see. Mm. Yeah. 2 Peter 1 and 10. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 10. Come on. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. He says you must give diligence to make your calling and election sure. The Lord called you into this too. He elected you to be here. He says make your calling and election sure. Read. For if ye do these things, Ye shall never fail. You will never fail. Is that an opinion or a fact? That's a fact. That is a fact. It's not an opinion. If you apply the laws of God daily to your life, you will never fail. So, but does it mean that um, when you, because you, 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 you will make mistakes though. But if you apply, guess what? You will not recover. But if you don't apply, that sin will destroy you. You understand? Then you're going to start to hate the Bible. You're going to start, the, you're going to, start to hate the man teaching the Bible. You're going to start to hate the woman uh, 
apply the laws of God very modestly. You understand me doing it. Because you are not applying yourself. You understand? Because a lot of the times, I'll give you an example. There's a psychological term uh, where you know when you're always when you're too hard on yourself, right? Listen, I'm speaking for myself. I've seen this before and I've learned it the hard way by now. When you're too hard on yourself and you see like this, this thing is not, I'm not getting right with this. If you're too hard on yourself, guess what happens? You know what, you know what the problem is? You don't want to actually admit to yourself that you're not consistent in what you're doing. Because if you're consistent, because you don't have to do too, too much all at once. No, you bite the elephant piece by piece until you bring it to the ground. But guess what? If you don't do it daily, let's say you take an hour and you study the word, right? Every day. Just give it that as an example. If that, that type of process that is better than the one that does um, 80 chapters a day. Or not 80 chapters a day, but in one week, like every Friday, he, makes, he does 80. He's not going to be able to sustain that thing. But the person that is chewing it piece by piece, guess what's going to happen? You, you're not going to be hard on yourself. Because you know I'm consistent. You understand? And I'm applying myself. And every day, although even if it's 0.1%, there's movement I'm doing. And I'm building up to something. Guess what? You start to build that discipline slowly, 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 until you get to a point where, give me that in Sarah chapter 19. Um, there's a scripture in Sarah that talks about that thing. So don't be too hard on yourself. The only way you start to realize that uh, you are too hard on yourself, there's malfunctioning going on. What's this? Um, let me see. Is it Sarah 19? Uh, one second. You know what? I looked at that. This is like 18. Mm. Wisdom pain and down skill. Let's keep checking that. Um, <coughs> one second, bear with me. Where's the skip chat? Mm. Okay, I'm not gonna find it now. Drop it. Go back to where was we at? First Peter one, two and second Peter one and ten. Okay, read that again. Second Peter one and ten. The book of Second Peter chapter one verse ten. Uh -huh. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Uh -huh. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Ye shall never fall. Give us that one nineteen. I found it. Sirach chapter 119. There it is right there. Sirach 1 verse 19. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 19. Come on. Wisdom reigneth down skill. It says wisdom reigneth down skill. I uh, keep finish the verse. Wisdom reigneth down skill and knowledge of understanding and exalted them to honor that hold her fast. It says wisdom reigns down skill. Because guess what? When you apply the laws of God, you're gonna become you're gonna become skillful at it. You're gonna start to have skill in applying the laws of God. The more you apply, you gain experience, you start to the Lord will give you a, a skill to be able to know how to apply wisdom. So wisdom will reign down skill. The more you apply the laws of God, Guess what? You're gonna you're gonna start to have skill in how you apply. You're gonna start to now see things that you didn't see before. But that only comes through application. That's how you make sure that your body, you build up the spiritual house. You maintain building. You because when people when, when a building is, is is erected, right? Guess what? Who comes after that? The people that maintain the building, the cleaners. You understand? The people that paint. They do uh, repair and maintenance. Likewise with the Bible. Not only build the house, but you must maintain that house. Keep it clean. You understand? Maintain it. Repair. Where if you see there's a leak, plug it. That's a full-time job, by the way. 
You can put your work together every single day of your life until the world returns or until you die in this truth. Either way, those are the only options. Until you die in this truth or until the world returns. Alright, let's go back. Um, give me give me Romans chapter 8, verse 4. Romans 8, verse 4. We're still dealing with this uh, spiritual sacrifice that we must um, that we must uh, we must perform to the most high God. Romans 8, verse 4. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 4. Come on. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. You see that thing? That the righteousness of the law, that is why we need to build up our spiritual house, is so that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. You understand? So what is the righteousness of the law? We keep the commandments under Christ. That is the righteousness of the law. Read it again, what's from? The book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 4. Uh -huh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Read. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Are you struggling to find the, the verses? Because I see you're struggling to find the verses. Uh, okay, so look, I think you can use the Bible, right? Eh? I think you can use uh, the Bible because I see she's still struggling. Listen, we were there before. Yeah. I, know, I, know, I know that it is easier. If you, you, you quickly, you're going to grow out of it. You're going to find it quick. Um, Romans 8 verse 4 here. The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 4. Come on. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. The righteousness of the law must be fulfilled in us. By us applying what is written. Watch this. Give me Second Corinthians. I'll give an example. Because what happens is that um, sometimes we have the mindset of saying, but like I mentioned earlier, this is my body. You understand? I can do whatever I want with it. Isn't that what they're pushing in, 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 in the media? The politicians are pushing that the woman has a right to do what she wants with her body. It's her body. You don't have a right to tell her what to do with her body. That, those are, that's evil communication. You know I'm right. You've heard this before, right? So, guess what? Part of that is a woman can have an abortion, the husband doesn't have to know. The husband does not even have a say on that. Today the sister can be six months pregnant, tomorrow the, baby, the stomach is flat. The husband will ask, no, oh, but this is my boy. I don't have to tell you nothing. And that's in the law, by the way. That's in the law of the land. So must we be agreeing with that? No. We follow the law that says, thou shalt not kill. Because abortion is murder. You understand? So, Give it up to Second Corinthians 5, verse 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15. Come on. And that he died for all. So Christ died for all Israel. That's what it means here. Read. That, that they which live should not get forth live unto themselves. So we no longer live unto ourselves. We lost that life when the Lord created us. Right? But unto him which died for them and rose again. You see that thing? So our life don't belong to us. You understand? Our life do not belong to us. Our bodies don't belong to us. The spirit that we have in us does not belong to us. It belongs to the Father. You understand? It belongs to the Father. So the things that they say in the media, all of a sudden you're going to hear somebody repeating it. And guess what? Brothers also, they push that, by the way, for the sisters. Where a sister, they have sex, the sister falls pregnant. The brother says, you know what? I'm going to give you money to go and have an abortion. So, what is that called? Accessory. Accessory to commit marriage. Now you're part of the when he when she goes in jail, you gonna go, you gonna be jailed too. Because you are paying for it, says, listen, give me a call once you're done. Yes, sir. that's what they want. The brothers are pushing them. Give me a call after you're done, you know I'm not ready right now, you see. You know, like there's things I need to do. He's gone. Guess what? How do you know that that's not the last baby that the Lord gave to you? How do you know that? You don't know that. That thing, you wake up every day. Give me Ezekiel 16 verse 20. 
Zikyo Kazu. This issue right here is a very controversial issue because they say, no, it's legalized abortion. There's no such thing as legal abortion. It's only legal. Zikyo chapter 16, verse 20. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verse 20. That's the words I gave on the women of Israel. Watch this. Moreover, thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters, whom thou hast born unto me. You see what he's saying? Whom thou hast born unto me. To me. Because those children don't belong to the mother that is carrying that child. She don't belong, he or she don't belong to the mother. Read. Whom thou hast born unto me, and these hast thou sacrificed unto them to be devoured. Uh -huh. Is this of thy whoredoms a small matter? Is this, this whoredom that the women of Israel, both men and women by the way, because the men are helping, encouraging the women to do so. Is this, this whoredom that our people are doing? The Lord says it's not a small matter. It's a serious business for you. Read on, watch this. That thou hast slain my children. You see that? Thou, thou, thou hast slain my children. Because the children don't belong to us. Read. And delivered them to cause them to pass through the fire for them. That's an old term to mean abortion. Pass through the fire. Read. And in all thine abominations and thy whoredoms, thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth. Come on. When thou wast naked and bare, mm -hmm. and wast polluted in thy blood. Because what happens? During the lockdown, there's a company called Marriott, Marriott, Marriott Stokes, or Marriott Stokes, something like some kind of a website. They are responsible for the abortions and all of that. There's a case, there was a case, I was looking on their website where a sister, I think her name is 90 or something, she was pregnant, she wanted to have an abortion. And during the lockdown, we couldn't go out. Your parents would ask, where are you going? You understand? Guess what she did? She called that, uh, that website. They've been operating since, I think, 1994, something like that. And they explained how it went down. He says, no, she called, and you know, it was very friendly, a seamless process. Um, we, we called her, she called, and then we, uh, we, we gave her the pills. I forgot the name of the, the pill that they take. And that, that pill was delivered by mail. They send up somebody to come and deliver it, or they deliver it by mail. Somebody brings that thing. They say, all you have to do, just uh, take it, and it melts. And then you're going to be bleeding for two weeks or more. And then, then after the bleeding you stop, then no baby no more. So you mean to tell me, for two weeks, you're going to be sitting there bleeding yourself almost to death. Nothing comes to your head, he says, I'm melting my baby here. Because this was going on. And tomorrow, guess what they do the next day? Here's what the Lord says. Give me uh, Ezekiel. Uh, Ezekiel 24, Ezekiel 23, and verse, verse 39. Watch what they do after they do that. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 23, verse 39. Uh -huh. For when they have slain their children to their idols, that they came the same day into my sanctuary and profane it. You see that thing? After they commit their abortions, they go to church on Sunday and sit there and say, Jesus loves me. They praise, they praise more than everyone does it. That's it. That's good. These are things that happen every day in the Christian church. Guess what? Those things are happening in Israel too. Read on. Watch this. And lo, thus have they done in the midst of mine house. In the house of the Lord. Read. And furthermore, that ye have sent for men to come from far, unto whom a messenger was sent. And lo, they came for whom thou didst wash thyself, platest thy eyes, and deckest thyself with ornaments. So after they commit the abortion, the sister puts on makeup, they put on high heels, and then they are walking around and say, I'm single, I'm looking now. Listen, the most I know is what he created here. He knows his creator, he knows exactly how we move as a nation. He knows what he made. You understand? So this thing of saying, no, it's my body, listen. 
This is the reason why the Lord is killing, is killing our children, is killing our babies. Because we have taken into our hands to make decisions that are a matter of life and death. By the way, since when, when full term abortion came to place in South Africa, guess who was the president? Mandela was the president. 94. Where a woman in full term can have an abortion. Full term, yeah. Nine months. Nine months she can have an abortion. So, and in the U.S., it was recent in the U.S. You understand? In the U.S., it's recent. They even had a video about it. Listen. If you see that thing, you're not going to eat for days, I'm telling you. That thing, man, oh my God. The doctor that was performing that thing, he was talking like he was uh, picking bones on the chicken yards. <coughs> he was saying, listen, when we know that we've done it right, because he was even he was in court testifying, he had a, like a, some kind of a, an instrument that looks like a, a long Caesar, very long thing. He was saying, when they know that they, they've done it right, they know that thing if it opens all the way out, it's able to hold the baby's scalp. And they crack the baby's scalp. And they pull the bones out, they pull everything out until everything is out. So, after that is done, guess what happens? Is that they take themselves, they pick their eyes, and they look for a new man now. Hmm. That's an evil stuff here. Guess what? Those things are happening every day, by the way. Every single day. If it's not the older sisters doing that, the younger sisters are doing that, the teenagers. Guess what? When they do that, here's what happens. Have you, you, you never heard where teenagers that are pregnant, they are actually dying during childbirth. In South Africa, they are dying during childbirth. The Bible records that thing. Give me Isaiah 37 verse 3. Isaiah 37 verse 3. I'm definitely going to close it out here. Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, I wanted to go over, but because of the logistics of today, we will just uh, close the class here. Yeah. Isaiah 37 verse 3. The book of Isaiah chapter 37 verse 3. Come on. And they said unto him, Thus saith Hezekiah, This day is the day of trouble, uh -huh. and of rebuke, Come on. and of blasphemy. Really? For the children are come to the birth. The children are come to the birth. Teenagers now, they are giving birth. Really? And there is not strength to bring forth. Because a 13 year old giving birth. Listen, there is too much blood they are losing. Their body is not grown enough to be able to carry a baby because they are still a baby themselves. They are still developing. But when it's time for them to give birth, listen, the mortality rate is quite high, 47% plus. Of teenagers dying while they are giving birth. So when you look at the landscape, you really see really like a, how, how much the system is set up against us. Because now children, teenagers, they can tell you, yeah, but it's my body too. You don't gotta tell me nothing. And guess what they do? They will make, they will call those people, they will buy stoves, medium stoves, whatever they call them, that website, um, and they deliver the pills. The child drinks it, it melts the baby. They will be it for days, some time. So you cannot be in this truth and be okay with something like that. No. Those are things that are supposed to make you even study more so you can spit fire out of the streets and be a walking flame. Sleep, really. Go out there and be, like, be a walking flame to rebuke and to pull down all the evils that we see. You understand? So I'm going to end the class right here. Um, let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 23. We're going to break bread. Uh, I need to find out about this uh, food business. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 23. Let's read that. We're going to read all the way to the stage. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 23. Come on. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. Come on. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. 
This do in remembrance of me. Come on. After the same manner also he took up he took the cup when he had when he had sucked, saying, This cup is the new testament in my blood. Uh -huh. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink of this and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For if for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among, them, among you, and many sleep. And many sleep. In the, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we say Amen. Let's give the more time for that. Oh, please. Oh, please.